talking about four different people because I met them all the same day so <laughs> and it was it was fun I had a wonderful time so um the, the the thoughts and truths in my stories are my truths alone it may not be the other people's truth but just know this is my story this is how I met so if they tell you anything different so, um, <laughs> in this installment, I will tell you how I met Eric Terry, Rob Hiltman, um, DJ Skills, and Frederick White. Um, so, um, yeah, DJ Skills, great DJ, Rob Hiltman is a public speaker, and, um, Frederick White is Terrence J's manager. Hopefully I have all the names right. I didn't look all this stuff up. I'm going off of memory. And Eric Terry is DJ Skills Manager. Boom. So, um, and I have on white, I have on this, it's actually a dress, you can't see it all. But it's a dress because um, it was an all white function that I was going to. So this is the dress I had on, not when I met them, but later on that night, this is the dress I had on. I don't remember exactly what I had on at the date party, because I just don't remember. So, um, few years ago for some reason my birthdays are just blah. unless I take myself on a trip or I do something um, for me everybody else is always doing something and sometimes I'm just not called upon to do things so sometimes my birthdays suck not lately and not all the time so this year I was sitting at home my birthday is normally Memorial Day weekend so you know people are doing trips with families and doing all this other stuff and most of the times, I'm just home. Um, unless I go to Fayetteville. Fayetteville has um, a big weekend party, which I say is for me. Um, the, the, uh, the high school, E.E. E. Smith, has their reunion. And they have a re reunion for all the classes every year. So I normally go to that. But this year, I didn't. That year, I didn't go. So I'm not sure why. I don't know. I was probably in my feelings. It happens. I'm a Gemini. So, um... <laughs> So that weekend, I was just sitting at home, and then I was like, something hit me and was like, I want to do something. So I'm scrolling through Facebook. Um, I live in North Carolina. I'm scrolling through Facebook. Boom. One of my friends is throwing a party. They're having a day party, a boat ride, a breakfast. Some, like, they were having a whole weekend of it in Virginia, Virginia Beach. Um, so I looked at my clock. I say clock because it was on my phone. I'm just putting my hand up for, for uh, effect. So I looked at my clock. And I was like, huh, I got time to make it down there for the day party and then catch the boat ride. I didn't call anybody. I didn't tell anybody I was coming. I looked up the stuff online. I figured it out. Packed a bag. Didn't have anywhere to stay. <laughs> Packed a bag. Got dressed. Got in my little car. To go to the day party. Um, what car did I have then? I think I had my sports car then. So, yeah. Um, so, I drove to Virginia to hit, to catch the day party. I think I caught the last hour or so of the day party. So, I'm at the day party. I, you know, I see the guy who's putting it on. He's like, what, what, what you doing here? I was like, I saw it on Facebook. And I drove up. And he was like, where are you staying? I was like, I don't know. Y'all got any rooms left? He was like, nah. <laughs> I was like, well, if you get a room available, let me know. If not, I'll find somewhere to stay. And he was like, okay. So, um, met the day party. I'm chilling again. I'm there by myself. I'm just, I really don't know people. I'm just hanging out at the day party, dancing. I don't drink, so I'm just there dancing, drink. So, I see somebody walk past. And I'm like, Derek, hey, what's up? And he was like, hey, how you been? What's been, what you been up to? What you doing now? You know, questions you ask people you don't know because you're trying to figure out how you know them. Yeah, so in my mind, he was a guy named Derek. 
that I know that throws party in North, in North Carolina as well. We were in Virginia, but the person who's throwing the party in Virginia is from North Carolina. He does parties in North Carolina. So I'm thinking he knows Derek. Nope, that wasn't Derek at all. Didn't realize it till a couple hours in. And I was like, this is not the dude I thought it was. Completely different dude. They look alike to me. So I said Derek. He thought I said Eric. Boom. There's the introduction. That's how I met Eric Terry. <laughs> so we talk or whatever. And then, um, and this was like the ending of the party. And then um, Frederick comes over and he's like, hey, what's up? He's talking. He speaks very nice. Um, and DJ Skills comes over. He speaks and they like, who this? You know, everybody introduces. And then he's, you know, Eric's looking at me like, what's your name again? Because we've never met. All this time, I'm thinking he's Derek. He doesn't know who I am, but he's like, he's going to play it off because he beat so many people. He didn't want to be rude. So um, they were standing in front of me talking about how they were going to go to a cookout. And I was like, cool, I want to go. And they all looked at me. And they were like, okay. And I was like, I can drive y'all because, you know, it, it's a day party. People have been drinking and all this other stuff. And they looked at me again. So they went over to the guy who was throwing the party. They were all talking and stuff. And then um, they was like, yo, we here to go to this party. You coming? And he was like, no. And then uh, dude pointed at Frederick. He was like, she going to drive us. And they looked at him to get approval. He was like, oh, yeah, she cool. <laughs> now, I've never seen. Normally, it's the other way around that, you know, when it's women, they get approval of people that they're going to hang out with. And be like, yo, you know this dude? You know, but they were like, three dudes. Yo, you know this girl? <laughs> I know what the eye movements and the head movements and the point, and I know what all of that was about. They, He was asking him, was I cool and was I okay before they took me to go hang out with them? Because again, I know who any of them were <laughs> at this point in time. So, we go to this cookout. Frederick drives, but he was like, yo, I'm probably drinking some more at the cookout, so... You drive back, I'll just tell you where to go on the drive back. So they haven't having a good time in the car talking, you know, what men do. I'm sitting there chilling. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to a cookout. We get there. Apparently it's at Rob Hillman's house. I hopefully I'm getting the name right. Um, and it was a cookout. It was it was a cookout. Like I like cookouts. I love my people, and you know what we do. And it was it was nice. We sat in the backyard. We were eating. We were chilling. People were talking, playing cards, having fun, doing what they do. And everybody was meeting other people. Everybody was talking. We were all, I mean, it was it was a nice cookout in, in the neighborhood with the cookout. <laughs> that's all I can say. I don't want to say much more. But um, so that's when I, I met Rob. I, I don't know if it was his house or whose house. I don't know. Because, again, I didn't know about any of these people beforehand. So, we're on our way back. Um, they want to stop at the store. Because I'm driving at this point. So, they, you know, tell me how to get to the store. Um, I stop at the store. They're all in the store. My girlfriend calls me. Um, Rhonda Mayo. Hey, girl. Uh, she's an event planner out in Charlotte. So, um, she calls. And she was like, what are you doing? She was like, oh, boy, said he saw you. You were in Virginia. It was asking me because... Ron and I grew up together, so he's he was like, yeah, your girl here, and she was like, she ain't tell me, so she hit me up to see what I was doing. I was like, yeah, I'm hanging out with Eric, DJ Skills, and Fred. She was like, oh, yeah, they're good people. I was like, okay, cool. That's what's up. Because <laughs> mind you, I just met everybody. But again, sometimes I go into situations not knowing people, and they end up being the best situations. I don't know where where some of these people are meeting these other people, but I normally end up meeting great people who who are genuinely nice, who are not just they're just nice people and they they take care of people regardless if they know them forever or just met them. Those are the type of people I meet. So, this was no different. So, like I said, Rob at the cookout, he Gave us great hospitality. Of course, he knew all of them, but it was great hospitality, great food, great everything, and it was 
a wonderful time. We stayed till it almost, you know, got dark because we had to come back and get ready for the boat ride and went to the store. And then we came back and um, I was hanging out with Eric because Skill said he wanted to take a nap before because he was DJing the boat party. And then I was like, uh, yeah, I need somewhere to change my clothes. And Eric was like, well, good. I guess you can come up to our room and change. <laughs> so I went, changed, put on my dress, got ready for the party. Um, ended up getting my ticket for the party. Uh, danced all night at the white party because, you know, DJ Skills is a man. He, he be cutting and scratching and doing his thing, playing the music. And I was like, hey, all night, all night, all night. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so me and Eric, we stayed and we, we were eating again because I like to eat. So, <laughs> so before the boat ride, we ate again. So, um, yeah, so that was about it. And after the boat ride, they were like, do we run to the party? He's like, where you stay? I was like, I don't know. And then Eric and uh, Skills was like, look, you can stay in our room. You can have a bed, be over here, be over here. You're cool. This is nice. This is good. You're going to be okay. I was like, word? <laughs> so, that's what happened. I had a place to stay. Got up that morning. They had to hurry up and leave because they had to be South Carolina, I think. Somewhere for another thing. They were like, you can have a room. You can stay here as long as you want. Chill out. Whatever. And I had the room. I stayed till like 11. I stayed till checkout. And then um, got up. Drove back home. I mean... When people, when people say that they don't meet nice people or genuine people, um, black men out here that, I don't know who these people they're meeting are, but when I tell you most, majority of the black men that I meet, and, and I am stating this for a reason, black men, because the majority of the black men that I meet treat me with respect, they are genuinely nice to me, they are not necessarily looking for anything from me and they always take care of me i'm not sure why <laughs> but i don't question it because i i've not met any that were meant to do me harm and that's even um in these types of situations on the street i was even talking to somebody the other day they were like you know some women have been getting upset because men call them beautiful or say hey beautiful or whatever i was like i have homeless men call me beautiful and guess what i do i smile and say thank you thank you thank you so much because you know what he didn't have anything thing else to give and he gave me a compliment and so for me and, and didn't ask for anything after the compliment so for me that means so much so i mean you know shout out to to, to black men shout out to CJ Skills, um, shout out to Eric Terry, shout out to Frederick, shout out to Rob. Um, not sure if any of you all remember meeting me. Well, I know Skills and Eric do because I, I still go to their parties and stuff. So, <laughs> they, I, you know, I became a fan. So when they come close or if I'm somewhere and Skills is DJ and I make sure I, I come out and see them. Um, so, yeah, so I do still, still see them all the time. Um so yeah so that's it for this installment of him how i met the four <laughs> so don't forget to leave uh questions comments uh whatever on the post and um great talking to you stay tuned for the next episode of him coming very soon Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Him. And um, we have an interview with DJ Skills. Hey. What's going on? <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm alive. Nothing uh, much. I see you got your purple rain on going yeah, on. You know, it's, you know, I guess it's a fitting tea. <laughs> it is. Whenever you represent a Gemini, it's always a fitting tea. Well, I, I got to represent anything at this point because they, they try to skip over my season every. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> we all I mean, in the same boat. I was just about to say, we've all had it bad this year. So, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's all right. Bad. So, 
I got some good questions for you. Let's shoot. Let's shoot for it. Okay. So my first question is, when did you become a DJ? Um, the year I think I started was 96, 97. Um, when I was in high school, that was my, uh, yeah, that was my first touching of a turntable records mixer. Yeah, that was, yeah, it's like 96, 97. Yeah. Okay. You were in high school in 96, 97? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, they say I have an old soul, so I guess I'm like a young OG right now. A lot of people was like, oh, you got to be older than that. I'm just like, nah, like, but once I got in the game, I was, I was in it. Like, my first party, I don't, my first, I didn't do my first party until like my, a year after I actually touched turntables, like for the very first time. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like a, I didn't. I never believed in like halfway doing anything. So it's like when I got into, I'm like I was playing sports at the time, so juggling both the two. But it was like a, if I'm gonna do it, like let me. I want to be the best. So that was kind of like my angle. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, and I don't know why I thought you were older. Not that you know, you have to be older. But right. uh, <laughs> this, yeah. Um. <laughs> so um. And in becoming a DJ, because I know you, you DJ, you know, I know homecomings are have been canceled. Right. Some of them have been already. And I know that's, you know, your your big thing because you were doing even during COVID, you were doing the HBCU parties. Right. right, right so right. um what how do you feel about that? Or what are you what are you doing about that? Like to help to change to well, me and my team, I mean, well, you know, it's it's two ways I look at it, right? Um, first, me and my team, we're working on some things from a virtual standpoint for the HBCU mm -hmm. uh, things for homecoming. So, um, you know, still trying to keep that alive. Um, but, you know, it's, it's safety first, you know? Um, yes. I can yes. go on a million theories of why I think this is happening, but at the end of the day, it really is not going to make any sense it might not make sense to some but it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we got to focus on the what is and after all of this is over with hbcu still have to survive mm -hmm. so you know that's my thing i'm just looking forward to the back end like you know you deal with it now once they give you the bad news but now you have to figure out how you're gonna get to the other side of the bad news and right, so right. that's that's kind of like my focus is kind of like once they put that out there, it's just kind of like, man, that kind of hurts. Like, and I'm not, even, I'm not even speaking from a business perspective, like, right, we both know, like, if you have history with HBCUs, like, a lot of HBCUs they survive off of sports and mainly football, homecomings, like, that brings a lot of revenue. So, you know, just from mm -hmm. that standpoint, you know, I look at it from a way like, man, that's gonna hurt a lot of HBCU schools, like, yeah, a lot of them may not be able to survive. You know, so it's just a thing of, you know, how are you going to get to the other side? You know, and that's yeah. pretty much my my prime, my premier focus, especially now and just going into 2021, because I already kind of this year is a wrap. I mean, it's six months left in this year. And, you know, I mean, it's just from a realistic standpoint, you, you, it's, you know, it's all about positioning and an alignment for what is going to happen on the other side. So, you know, that's kind of like where my focus is at now, um, even even with HBCU. Whole, the whole HBCU movement is, is about the other side, knowing how to survive and surviving on the other side, because that's that's the thing that us as African-Americans, we need HBCU schools to still stay open. So it's just kind of like, you know, me and my team, we're trying to think of ways to, you know, um, provide some services and put some things into play to where we can bring awareness to that. So just because mm -hmm. homecoming is dead doesn't still mean you cannot support your HBCU school. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Yeah, yeah, and 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 your love for HBCUs when a lot of times when you say homecoming, DJ skills are synonymous with homecomings, like and not just in this area, like all over. That's so, a, <laughs> all right, that's a fact. <laughs> it, it is, and and um, not only for homecomings and everything, but you what like because I know you DJ internationally. So, uh, <laughs> so what do you? What do you count as your success? Like, how have you be, been able to be so successful to be able to travel and DJ pretty much all over the world? I mean, you 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 are loyal to your home base, but you are everywhere. 
So okay. what do you credit that to? Um, my work ethic. My work ethic and me just staying true to what it is that I that I do. And I mean, like from the beginning, from my very first start of DJing, um, I always said I want to be an internationally known DJ, not from mm-hmm. a point of, you know, selling out. And I think that's pretty much from my upbringing. Like I'm from mm-hmm. Florence, South Carolina, which is like a suburban city where I-95 and I-20 meet. But it's a lot of things that went on in my city when I was growing up. Then it's kind of like a, it made you either ready and real or it made you fake and just like i'm gonna just do whatever and mm-hmm. you know a lot of people that i was around even my family like we just never rolled like that and my father you know they instilled a lot of me like just pretty much stay true to what it is that you do stay true to yourself so i never mm-hmm. so loud and you know i I will go against the grain but i'll go against the grain if that's what my heart needs me like you know i'm not one to follow mm-hmm. a crowd like i you know i'm not stepping out or trying to you know lead for attention if that's the right word, it's more so right, right. This is the right thing to do. So, um, uh, I forgot the question that you asked. I was about to get back into it, and I just lost track, like just that fast. But I know about your success it. and being able right. to, yeah, right. So all <laughs> that goes back to the whole success thing. Um, just mm-hmm. me working. Like I always had a vision. Like when I first got my, when I went on my first tour, and um, like just being on that stage and just seeing like a crowd outside of Florence, South Carolina, that very first night I said, this is what I wanna do. Like, this is what I want. Like, not to be a local DJ, I wanna be a DJ that travels and play on big stages and reach masses of people throughout the world. And I stayed true to that and I stuck to it. And it was like, whatever work ethic I needed to put in to make sure that I was always prepared when my number was called, it was like, I was willing to do that early on in my career. So that's when I was at St. Aug, I was putting in work, paying dues, moved to Atlanta, same thing. And I mean, to a degree, I'm still doing it to this day, but it's just more so now I'm just more seasoned and, you know, I have a lot more relationships and my name is a little bit more recognizable. And, you know, so things happen a little bit easier, but it's, it all came from that work, that work mm-hmm. and a lot of the work that was going on around me at the same time, I always kept my feet moving. I never stopped. So. Yeah, and that and that's a good thing, and it has been working well for you. And right. and you said you your your name is more ne- recognizable. How where did your name come from? How did you get uh, the name DJ my Skills? First, my first name was DJ B, like just the letter B, because my government is Braxton Brown. So my my first name was DJ B, but you know. A couple of my friends thought the name was whack. It was just simple. They didn't say it was whack. It was just simple. Um, so they were just like, you know, you need to get a name that pretty much represents what it is that you do. And, you know, during that time, like I said, this is like my 10th grade year, 10th, 11th grade year in high school. And, you know, I was more so known for playing basketball. So, you know, I was a point guard on my basketball team. So people was like, you know, you nice at basketball and you nice on the tables. Like you need something that describes who you are. So, um, I couldn't think of a name, but my name was DJ B. And then one of the guys in my, I think it was an African-American history class, a guy named Jabri, he was like, yo, you should call yourself Skills. And I'm just like, mm. and around this time, Mad Skills was out. Um, mm-hmm. But I was the fan at the time. And I was just like, nah, I don't want to sound like nobody else. I want to be me. He's mm-hmm. like, there's no Mad Skills. There's no DJs called DJ Skills. And this was at that you know, period of time. Right, right. And I was just like, it got a ring to it. Roll with the S K I L L Z, and that's that was it. It was a rap ever since then. Stuck with it. Yeah, and now y'all are y'all are friends, like you and yeah, Mad that's Skills. The, that's the bro, like that's <laughs> that's that's the bro, like that's that's my guy. Like when he first um got it, well, I'm not gonna say when he first got into DJing, but um, like I was like I said, I was always a fan of Mad Skills, and um, I think I. My first time actually physically meeting him was in um, 2003, I want to mm-hmm. say. It's 2000, yeah, 2003, because I was on the radio at Foxy 99 in Fayetteville. Mm-hmm. But um, he in, he actually had family, or has family, probably still do, but at the time I know he had family in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Yeah, and, he used to, he lived in Fayetteville as a child, too. Okay, so right. So yeah, yeah. so his family was there. Yeah, and um, he had a good relationship with uh, Uzi D, which was the program director at Foxy Ninety Nine at the mm-hmm. time. And, yeah, you know he dropped in, and then when he walked in the room, Uzi was like, "Yo, you know DJ Skills?" And he was like, "Yeah, I know him." And I'm like, "What?" Like, you know, and me, I'm 
at that time, I'm just like, nobody don't know who I am, even though I was like doing a lot of major things under the mm-hmm. radar, even at that point in my life. But I was like, nobody of that magnitude like knows who I am. And then to me, it was like, a, you know, I've been a fan. So we chopped it up for a minute. Um, and from there, it's just kind of like, you know, it was a, it was like a recognizable thing. Every time we saw each other in passing, you know, what's going on? And he actually recognized and he knew who I was. So it was like after that, it was kind of like the tone was set. Even when he got into DJing um, and we was here in Charlotte, we did a club out here in Charlotte that night. He was hosting and I was DJing. And that night after the club, he was telling me that, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be doing my thing with Jazzy no more. Jazzy Jeff, I'm about to start doing my own thing with DJing. So he just like, you know, anything he like, I like your style, whatever. He's like anything that you can give me as far as pointers, whatever. And I was just like, bro, like come to the house tomorrow. And I think I still had a picture or whatever, but we sat like right here in my music room for probably like two to three hours. And we just sat and we just talked. He shared stories. I shared stories and, you know, just kind of gave him a lot of just, just game and things that I felt that he needed to know just mm-hmm. before he dove into the DJ and things. So yeah, that's, that's like family almost in a sense. So yeah, that's 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 the bro. Yes, and I love hearing stories of how people um, connect and work together and help each other out and do, you know, cause it kind of came full circle cause that's where the name started. Then y'all start working together like this. Like he, did, he didn't know who I was in 96, but clearly everybody knew who he was in the hip hop world. And like mm-hmm. you said, it, just, it was organic. And you know, me, I'm not, I'm not a, I don't know if I can curse on here, but I'm not a, a ass kisser, you know, right, or, right. for the organic. And that's that's how that and like you said, it how it's funny how that came around, you mm-hmm. know, full circle. And that's man, that's that probably was almost that was 2014, 2015, I think. Oh so yeah, so from the initial time that I actually started DJ, and I don't really count that i count when i dropped out of college like when my professional dj career started but i mean technically that was like almost 20 years since i you know knew who he was as the artist and then that came full circle where we actually really sat and built for like three hours so yeah oh wow that's 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 very dope now um in in my uh how i met i talk about how um I met you, Fred, Eric, and Rob. So, yes. So, go through how you know all of them. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll do the short version. i do the shortest version first. I met okay. with, with Rob Hill through yep. Fred Witt. Um, um, and Fred, we met, me and E knew no, Fred from back at my days and living in Raleigh um, and doing college parties. So when I first moved to Raleigh, like nobody was booking me in the city of Raleigh. Like when I Mm. say nobody, nobody, even while I was at St. O, it was like I was the outcast guy from out of town and it is what it is. But, you know, like I said, like me being from Florence, South Carolina, is kind of like a, you don't back down. Like you, you, you stand on, you stand on your back straight and you stand up on your own two feet and you make things happen. So, um, my cousin uh, knew one of the main promoters down in Greensboro that was doing Thumping Thursdays at the ballroom at the time. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yo, like, you need to book my cousin. Like, the same line he was running to everybody in Raleigh, but people in Raleigh weren't hearing it. But one guy in Greensboro, he was just like, all right, I'll let him open up. Like, you know, you shoot him a little bit of change. So I drove down that first Thursday that I did it. And he's like, oh, man, your cousin dope. He's like, he want to come down every Thursday and open up? So that's kind. that was kind of like my introductory into the whole Greensboro Market and shouts to Larry King, shouts to my cousin Quante. Um, that was my introduction, and um, you know from there, that's where my name started getting a real strong build in on the AT forefront. And this was like, uh, this was had to be late '99 going into 2000. Mm. So that started my consistent push in the Greensboro market. And then I think Fred and Terrence came in. I want to say 2001 maybe a 2000, but I was already circulating in the market a little bit. And, um, you know, Terrence J started to get popular on the radio and he was a popular host. And then, um, you know, uh, we started to connect. Um, I, we had our crew in Raleigh. We was called the Hollow Squad. But E. Terry, at which we met at St. Aug, he was working Rockefeller Records at the time. He started managing me in 2000. 
one, 2002, I want to say, but this was mm. kind of like when things were really bulging for me and Terrence J on the college scene. And mm -hmm. um, Terrence J had team, I think it was Team Dollar. There's a Team Dollar, and I was the Holler Squad. And by that time, Fred Witt was a part of that squad. And from there, it was just kind of like a, you know, we, I would DJ the parties, Terrence would host, but all of us would, you know, be together. So it was kind of like it was a huge brotherhood. And mm -hmm. from there, like, our relationship just always stayed intact with, you know, saying with all four of us. Even now, like, you see us at Essence Festival and, mm -hmm. you know, all the different places and things of that nature. So, yeah, that's pretty much how that relationship started. So I'm, if you could tell, it's more so like a tight knit loyalty type thing. Like it I is. Like I don't, really, you know, like hey, I met I met him yesterday. That's my good friend. Like nah, if I met you, they cool. All right, I don't know you like that. So no disrespect, but it is what it is. <laughs> right. No, I I completely understand it. I completely understand. Um, but yeah, but no, just meeting all of you all together, it was. It was great. You can tell how tight you were. Because y'all literally looked at Larry for approval if I could drive y'all to the cookout. Yeah, because we didn't know you. And, right. And, uh, yeah, we didn't know you. I think Fred may have had like a couple of drinks. I know like Fred ended up carrying my cases, so that's why I knew it was going to be a good day. But like we didn't know you, and it was kind of like, all right, well, who is this? She's like, all right, well, she seemed cool. And Fred was like, we're going to a cookout. All right, let's go. <laughs> and, and then was, when, you know, that was, and then he was like, you going to drive? I was like, all right. right. None of us could drive. <laughs> None of us could I ain't drive. had nothing to drink. I'll drive. <laughs> right, right. I think yeah, but, you were the only sober. So, yeah, but was. all of y'all looked at Larry like, is she good? And Larry right, was like. That, that was our confirmation. He was just like, yeah, she all right. He's like. <laughs> All right, cool. Like we know he's not gonna steer us wrong, so you know. Right, right. And that was the funny part, because three men looking at it looking to see if I was okay. Right. Hey, listen, sometimes we you know, we was in Virginia. Like none of us live in well, Fred actually was living in Virginia at the time, but me and Enoch. So and I think Fred had just like moved to Virginia. So, you know, it was one of those things like Virginia is for lovers, but Virginia is for crazy people too. So, you know, we just yes. you know. Precautionary. I'm, I'm from North Carolina, though. But yes, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> is there anything that you would do differently on your path to where you are? Um, not necessarily. Um, because the path that I took, it uh prepared me for a lot of the bumps in the road that I've come across. Um, mm -hmm. so. I don't think I would have it, you know, with minor changes here and there, excuse me, but for the most part, it's, it was a lot of lessons taught in my journey. Mm. Um, and that's probably why a lot of people look and they be like, oh, you think that you're older? Oh, because I move like I've been around this game for a while and I have, but at the same time, I learned a lot and, you know, as well as I win, you see those wins. I'm not going to post all my losses on Front Street. And you got to think, I took a lot of my losses at a time when social media wasn't even a thing, you know? So, you know, people wouldn't mm -hmm. really know about those losses unless, you know, they was we was just to really sit down and have a conversation. And I don't mind sharing those because at the end of the day, it's like, if you if you know better, you do better. So mm -hmm. for me, it was kind of like, I'm about to certain things and I learned. And it's like, oh, well, don't do this or avoid these type of people or know how to move around these type of people or, you know, know how to be in a room, talk, but don't give away all of your secrets and, you know, things of that nature. So it's like, right. if I would have never been in a predicament or position, imagine how it would be now that I'm traveling internationally, being around more celebrities and being more of a household name with celebrities and sitting in these rooms with these celebrities. And I'll mm -hmm. be having this conversation kind of like, like, you know, nothing even happened. So a lot of people look at me, they kind of like, ah, oh, man, you're doing it, this, that, and the third. And I'm just like, you have no idea. Like, it's so much more that I'm trying to do and that I will do. But it's just, I would rather take the gradual approach because each year it's just like this. Mm -hmm. It's steps. I don't want to shoot up the, the ladder because right. if I shoot up, I'm going to come right back down just as fast. So I'd rather take those, you know, those gradual steps. Most of the, the uh, successful DJs that we see nowadays, they're they're not hitting their, their peak until they're like 45, 46. Mm -hmm. Let's take D-Nice, 
like you know and i've i've watched d nice as a dj since 2006 in atlanta you know yeah so when i was living in atlanta so you know you got to think now he's just really starting to get his just doing it. he just turned 50 years old so you know like things i look at things like that i move within the same circles of people mm-hmm. that he moving you know i just know everything is all about Tommy and I'm patient enough. I've been around this long and invested this much. I already know like the the best is yet to come. So I'm I'm sitting. I'm chilling. Yeah, you you like that organic movement? I like that. <laughs> yeah, got, got, I mean, you got. I mean, because you got to think if you force it, nine times out of ten you got to force something that's not gonna not gonna move how you want it to move. And now mm-hmm. you're forced to make a move with your back against the wall, and that's. It's no fun in that. Like, I love what I do. So it's like, why well, I'm going to make it harder than what it is. It's just like, yo, like, this is a God-given ability that you have. Roll with it. Like, just do your work, but roll with it. Don't force too much. Like, you know. Yeah. Very cool. So what do you have coming up next? What do you have going on? And how can people reach you? Well, I mean, we're sitting still right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're anyway. not. You're not, though. Well, I mean, technically, I mean, I kind of move back and forth to kind of keep my sanity intact. My family's still in South Carolina. So, you know, that that kind of keeps my sanity intact. I like to go down and, you know, be by the water. I'm a water baby. So, you know, um, do country boy things, southern boy things. So, um, yeah, that uh, I'm, you know, no parties, definitely. Right. Uh, we, like I said, we're working on something for HBCUs. Um, so that as soon as I get more information on that, you definitely see all of that on my social media, which is at Skills the DJ, Skills with a Z, the DJ. Um, that's Instagram, Facebook, um, and my website is skillsthedj.com. Um, I'm getting back into producing. When I first got into, when I first started DJing, I got into produ- production uh, via my cousin Mark Ella Vincent because he was a heavy producer in my city. So by me being around it, it was it just it was a natural thing. I taught myself how to play drums when I was hmm. five, six years old. So I've always been a lover of of music and just sound, live sound and percussion. Um, so I'm definitely getting back into that role um, right now, even as we speak, uh, working on production now. Um, and also, um, I am on Foxy 107, 104 in Raleigh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, 12 noon, 12 o'clock, energy shot, shout to Karen, Clark, shouts to uh, J Tech. Um, we just getting the ball. I think, I, yeah, it's, it's like a solid month right now that I've been doing that. A lot of great feedback. Um, looking to do some bigger things. I can't, you know, really say too much right now because, you know, okay. boy, it's, it's a vibe. It's a vibe right now, you know, being heard on the airwaves in Raleigh, Durham area. There's a it's a blessing and it's definitely long awaited because I've been trying to, I was, when I was in college, I was trying to get on radio on Raleigh, but you know, like I said, it was kind of like a, I was boxed out, but you know, yeah. perfect well, time if I would have stopped with my feet, you know. Right. But Fayetteville came through. Fayetteville came Fayetteville, through for you. Fayetteville, but the funny thing about that, at that time, Fayetteville was grabbing all of the top, I ain't going to say top, they was grabbing all the dope DJs from across the state. Uzi had a a, a, a mindset of, I guess, like Hot, not Hot 97 did at that time. Mm. Hot 97 had all the top DJs in New York on Hot 97. Fayetteville, Foxy 99, they had all the dope DJs from across the state. I'm talking about DJs would drive from Greensboro to do their radio shows live on mm. the air. And at that time, I know it was uh, DJ Swift, D Rock from Fayetteville, uh, Tommy G Mix. He lived in Winston at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Flash DJ Flash from Raleigh. That's my brother. He was DJing for Little Brother at the time, and um, me, I was doing a five o'clock. I was DJing for Rockefeller and Rail at the time. So it was like a conglomerate that Uzi had built that house on. But you know, it was all love because it was like we all kept each other on our toes, and mm-hmm. it was like a, it wasn't a competition thing, but it was like we have a powerhouse. Let's push that from a DJ perspective. And it just felt right. And I just always felt mm-hmm. like, you know, that's that's what radio was supposed to be like when people should always want to have their radio on. It's like no matter who's on, they just know they're going to get a different vibe, different feel, different type of flavor. So it was kind of like that that feel and that conglomerate. And I actually think that's kind of like the feel that J-Tech is trying to 
bring to the Raleigh Durham area. So, you know, definitely like salute to him on even, you know, making that play happen for me to be on the air at 12 no Mondays and Wednesdays now. So. Yes. And I love the word conglomerate. Don't ask me why. I don't yes. know why. That's a great <laughs> word. <laughs> it just sounds it sounded right. Yes, I, I love that word. Like you know, you know, Buster got a whole song about conglomerate. But um, <laughs> so um, those were all of my questions. Is there anything you'd like to add before we check out? Stay Rona free. Stay Rona free out here. Take your vitamins, you know. Keep your hygiene A1, you know. And uh, make sure you get plenty of vitamin D. Get out there and get some sunlight. Don't stay in the house all day because, you know, your body yes. wasn't built to be in, inside, you know. Get some of this organic weather and you know sunlight and all of that good stuff you need it in your life you know so yeah that's about it and make sure you just follow me on all my instagram social media skills the dj skills with a z the dj instagram facebook and skills the dj.com make sure y'all follow me on those and um yeah okay about it. well thank you so much thank you for joining me um thank you for allowing me to interview you for this episode of him how i met DJ Skills. Anytime. Anytime. I definitely enjoyed it. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, you too. Bye. Bye.